this is a steya. I thought it was a streya, like star, but it's a steya. And uh, nothing too special. No, don't stay here. It don't blows. stay here. It blows. It's a big, big uh, grungy. Big grungy. Uh, unfriendly. Here. Unfriendly. Man, there's a pla night. places have vibes. I mean, this is it's grungy. Yeah, and you, you see it in the faces of the people. But I don't want to wreck the folks that live here that are happy about it. But, but as an outsider walking in, it, it does have a little bit of a burnt, like the major factor that used to make this place a place is now gone. And then, and then you have people who've kind of degraded a little bit. But stay in Lorca. Yeah, Lorca. There's a couple. Two, two little towns before this Lorca. Yeah, there's a couple of really small, real cute little towns. However, know that those little towns, the Alberque is probably the only thing that's going to be there. And, uh, but they had some private rooms. Yeah, they have private, you can get private rooms. And um, like, okay, so we're here and you go to the grocery store and I got a nice kombucha, mm -hmm. which true. I really needed. It's true. So you're not going to get that in a little town. And uh, so there is this quandary of do you book ahead or do you wing it? very good question right so there's advantages advantages both ways and certainly if you book ahead you don't have the pressure versus booking as you go those are good questions there's advantages and disadvantages to both one of the advantages of not booking ahead is that you go until you get so tired you don't want to go anymore yesterday we're about two hours outside of Estrella, Estella, and uh, two women, two pilgrims, they couldn't make it. And I guess they somehow they negotiated with a woman for her to come and pick them up and drive them to Estrella because this is where they had the reservation. So that's a pretty good example of one of the downsides of booking ahead. Now, know that most people who are doing the Camino, or some, certainly some, are using luggage uh, carry, carry companies that transport your luggage from one town to the next town. And so if you've got that service, you're kind of stuck. Uh, if you're schlepping it all on your back, you do have the independence, you could stop anywhere you want. And you know, the, the, the risk with that is you may not find and accommodation because they're all full by the time you get there because everybody already got there earlier than you and so there is that pressure okay day six we just passed through Estrella which doesn't mean star just a name oh looks like okay. we're coming to a little Okay, so again, the question, do you book ahead or do you wing it? I would say it depends a little bit also on your personality. If you're the type that likes to have more order predictability, then I would highly recommend that you book ahead. That way you have none of the stress of getting to a town and you're pot tired and the Alberca is all full and it's a small town and there's not another place. And then you got to walk to the next town anyway. And then you're taking a risk. Then when you get to the next town, there's no place to stay. So um, I would also think that gone are the days of the pilgrim, the real true pilgrims and, and the way they greet you as a pilgrim. It's now it's more like, it almost feels like it's just another big business. It's like they see so many people coming. Uh, it's like an industry. And so it's not this, I mean, certainly some places I would say then Ordesa, uh, no, or go or the Orison oh. had um, more of an intent behind the Camino where we would have dinner together, we would talk a little bit about why we're here, and that certainly I, I thought maybe that was more consistent. But like the place we stayed at in in Estrella, Est Estella, Estella? Uh, not so much, it's like a hotel that uh, is like real trimmed down and it's super more like basic. Dorm, more like a dormitory. 
yeah more like a dormitory i would say so the breakfasts man they're they're they're, they're nothing i mean don't pay pieces extra. of cheese pieces of meat you're better to if if it's if the stores are open to get your own more healthier stuff and and that would be probably a really good idea there's nothing special there's nothing fresh about them Oop. yeah definitely the and, and they seem to be pretty darn consistent they all have two types of sliced meat and one one type of sliced cheese and cheap bread and and canned uh, orange juice and that's been pretty consistent uh, thus far when you get a breakfast included. So I, I, I just wouldn't bother with it. Yeah, don't pay extra for breakfast. I if wouldn't. it comes with it, whatever. But don't bother with it. You better to go to the local coffee shop and get a coffee and a croissant and head on down the road. Kind of. Um, I mean, it's tricky if you don't want to schlep anything and you're, and you're sort of a captive person, then, then I guess you could take it. But it's just not really healthy. I mean, if you can carry well, you know, the place did have some nuts, that, that last place, so uh, nuts and granola, so that's, that's possible. Uh, so again, yeah, I don't know if I've completed the conversation about booking ahead. I definitely like the idea of being, having a specific place that we know, and when we get to town, we don't have to stress that we don't have a place, so. It also affords us the ability to, we typically leave about 10 a.m., uh, and that's nice because lots of people yeah. are leaving like crack dawns because they want to be the first ones to the albergues uh, to get a room. And then they sit and they wait out until they start forming a queue. And I don't want to have to worry about every time somebody passes me that they're going to get my bed for the night. I think that's a lot of stress. Yeah, that's that, true. That, that I'm not, not in my personality. <laughs> well, see, there you go. So a, a little bit has to do with what is your personality type and, and if you like more order and predictability then then i would say you book ahead and uh i mean this camino we, we're at this is day six it's harder than you think it's a lot of just constant trudge you know step after step one of the guys the gentleman we met roy who was a i would say a spiritual brother brother if you will uh man he just texted us he's been on the camino for 10 days about 15 15 days 10 15 days and he hit the wall and he's ho he's going back home uh, so i was real surprised because he was a true a true uh uh camino i mean he had a lots of intent real spiritual intent got blessed by the anglican uh priest and so we expected that we were going to keep running into him and so i was real disappointed that uh he had some physical some health issues he said so, but we and wish him well we wish him well and uh we're gonna light a candle when we get to uh santiago, santiago. ourselves so but we ain't made it there yet so hopefully <laughs> hopefully we're about an hour and a half outside of estella Ship here today, about an hour and a half outside of Estella, Estrella, Estella, and uh, this kind of looks a lot like Texas Hill Country in a way. The oaks, so far, this segment of the trail. A stay to Los Arcos hasn't been quite as scenic, so let's see what's going to happen. Oh, that's rather pretty. Yeah, we sort of busted through the forest, and you're greeted with a lovely.
That's a beautiful landscape. Oh my God. I should just like fly right down there. I think I will. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, places have a vibe. <clears throat> about two hours to Los Arcos. We're probably about a little past the midpoint for the day. Well, we both feel energetic. It's just some things you'd like to say. Well, the weather's good right now. My hands are freezing. We stopped for a while. We're in the paint. But it's not raining, and the ground underneath my feet is soft, so everything's good. It's flat. It's flat. We're not going uphill. We're not going right downhill. Now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> it could change any moment. <laughs> so one has to know what their personality type is. If you're, if you're a dude or a person going by yourself, I would say the upper case, staying in the communal type of a thing is probably a good idea because then you can kind of interface with people and you have a little bit of social um, and you can kind of go along your way because if you're one person or a small group if you will you it's going to be a little bit easier to get what you want or to get accommodation um, I think the biggest head trip if you will or headache with the Alberques is at the end of the day man you're really tired and you just don't have a lot of extra energy to deal with people like you just want to kind of be left alone and now you're sort of plunged into an alberque and you're sharing a dorm with uh, two, four, six, eight people. It's, it's, it's a lot to take on for the end of the day. And I would say too, depending on how long you've been hiking, uh, probably as time goes on, that charm of that sort of wears. I mean, economically, that's another factor too. Sometimes just pure economics. Yeah. you. You 14, 14 euros for a bed versus 100 euros uh, um, like for a hotel room. I would say it averaging for Melissa and I is about 100, I would say. And uh, now some of the Alberques, they're like 40 euros for a bed. So it's all over the place. And that's not for private, so maybe like two, two bunks, four bunks in a room. Uh, and again, I think. It's a sweet idea, the concept of it, but in reality, it's a hit and miss how much you're going to have in common with your, with your mates that you meet, you meet. And although you're all on this journey, you're taking this hike together, it, it really does appeal to a real, real wide range of people. And to find your people within that, it, it, it's, a, you know, it's tough. And then they come and then they go and then you don't see them and you're on different schedules so that's all and of course we're completely making assumptions about what it would be like to be a pilgrim staying in albergues the entire time if that's your personality you probably would have set it up that way in the first place but we kind of knew that's not what we're going to do we're going to stay in our own private rooms and that's the way we're doing it and that's the beauty is that just like life you get to go your own way well and also psychological space is real important I mean you're tired and when you're tired you're not in the best place to hang and be cool and chilled out with with people and, and I mean we've met some folks and it's been at the end of the day and boy you know <laughs> I know them and I just don't have the energy to talk with them and and you know I want to go to my own room take a nice shower and refresh because think of it we're talking about six weeks of hiking so walking I mean I've even so, I even thought before all this that I have my little journal I thought I would be journaling every night and you know reading uh, for the next day or yeah. just reading for pleasure and boy you're by just the time pooped. I get everything ready to go for the next day showered I mean you're <laughs> pooped I'm not doing any of that you're so much pooped. less talking to anybody <laughs> yeah you you it's harder than you think uh, it's just the day in day out, you know, because it's yeah. like it's one thing to hike for 15 miles in one day But then you're gonna do it again the next day and the next day and the next day. Yeah, and, and that the stamina of that is like whoo The stamina and also the ability the, the you know certainly as you get older the ability for the body to recover 
from those types of uh, usage is harder and so and to make sure you're not injuring yourself yeah see because you know you get an injury and you know yeah, you're, you're done. game over so yeah, it's, it's game so know, I definitely yeah. think about that when I'm walking you know we were walking through a little narrow place today and I wasn't really paying attention and I looked down and boy if I had just gone to the right I might have rolled my ankle and game over I, I you could have sprained or even broken a no, so you have to be careful. Yeah, so that's something to think about. Not everybody who joins or gets on the Camino makes it to the end. And something that we learned doing the West Highland Way a year ago in 2023 is you want to finish. And, and, and you want to leave enough gas in the tank so you can finish. And, and, and there's not, strategies. And not yeah, which means take a day off. Take a day off when you need it. You know, maybe maybe go into a little bit small, mm -hmm. uh, 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 take a day off in a larger town and they got yoga or exercise or, or short, uh, a, 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 a massage place, massage, and, and then get a massage. Maybe take two days off. That way you're sort of pacing. Go slower. Yeah, you're take pacing, you're pacing yourself with your body and, and you're not pushing it. Um, yeah, I think it's a misnomer to watch the movie like The Way and think you're gonna get on this path here and then you're gonna meet all of these really cool people and you know just quirky quirky, quirky little friends that you're gonna meet along the way and you're all gonna jive and, and you're gonna take this journey together that's that's Hollywood that's that's not real that that's I mean it could be I suppose but I don't think that's really the way it works certainly not for us I mean you meet uh, Roy was a, a good encounter but he, he kind of injured himself and he's heading home so um, that's probably more the reality and I think it's few and far between that you can connect with people and just as we are exhausted and tired I notice that sometimes you connect with people and you talk with them it's almost like you know you have to be at the same place that you're wanting to engage and have a little bit of social interaction and so um, yeah, don't don't come with the preconceived idea of, ooh, look at all these new friends I'm making. Oh, what quirky people they are, and then you have this unusual connections. Uh, but you might. Uh, but be be prepared. And it's just. Tons of these little towns, little pueblos yeah, dotted throughout. I guess in a way it's like Greece. Greece would have a little little town after a little town. About an hour twenty minutes from Los Arcos. Los Arcos, there we are. I mean, what beautiful countryside. Oh, I think I will. Oh, oh. Yeah, younger guy. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I hate to tell how old my son is because it's a dead giveaway. Oh, look. He's like bringing chickens. <laughs> yeah. Is he in his 40s? 45. Huh. I thought I was saying that. They would rather have had Saddam Hussein than the Americans coming in. Uh, see, and I think the Americans did yeah, more damage. Did more damage, and it's continuing. Okay, how much longer? Forty-nine. <laughs> it's, the, it's the final push. Big old. Thirty minutes to Los Arcos. Well, I guess this is Los Arcos. All the cute little villages. This is where we end up in. I mean, sometimes it's about the kilometers. You know, it's a 
about not so much staying at the few place, but it's about making making 13 miles or something in a day. I mean, if, I guess you do have to be careful that you could take forever to do this trail if you only did like eight or six miles or something. Oh, look at the baby guy laying down. Look. <laughs> This is a fun looking Hi. Everybody gets along. Look at the baby. I mean, they're all taking their little baby nap. Everybody's getting along. A true communist country here. Look at the little. Okay, arrival into Los Arcos. We're like 10 minutes away from the hotel. It is a 1st of May. This is like their Labor Day, so it's kind of dead. We're probably not going to find anything that's open. I know. I think that X makes an H sound. <laughs> Still Los Arcos. Maybe it's Arcos because of the arches and the doors. Which you got a lot of them. Oficina de Turismo. Santa de Health. little town. <laughs> 